I built a new ghost detector. Since I built it my first one some years back, I still receive a lot of um, yeah messages from you guys uh, how to build it, how to code it, where you can buy it. Um, if you may uh, remember it, I called it the ultimate ghost detector. It combined multiple functions into one little handheld device, such as a spirit box, um, which is basically a radio scanner that scans through radio frequencies. You could adjust uh, the scanning speed. You could also adjust if it scans up or downward the frequency range, or even random numbers or random frequencies. You had a volume, a volume knob here. Then you had a green laser um, grid projector which uh, projects a laser grid onto the wall that uh, makes um, it easier to see visible or to see any kind of movement in the room. All this could be triggered by a microwave uh, motion detector in here. Then we had a, um, well, a simple compass, a magnetic compass, and an EMF detector, uh, electromagnetic field detector. Now, all these functions were controlled by an Arduino in here, um, and they caused quite a lot of interferences to each other. Uh, as you can imagine, sensing uh, electromagnetic fields is a difficult task when the, the device basically is surrounded by electromagnetic fields. Um, the EMF detector went crazy with the ghost box. The ghost box interfered with the uh, microwave sensor and so on. Also, the build was quite complex, and for my knowledge of Arduino coding also, well, very, very challenging, but of course a lot of fun too. So um, due to um, the late Ghostbusters hype, I had a new idea in mind um, of a ghost detector that combines three functions, uh, ghostly or supernatural appearances, as they say, often go along with the drop in temperature and air pressure. Also, I am interested in one of these new uh, REM pods that are pretty popular these days due to television um, shows and stuff like that. Um, same as an EMF detector, it is all about electromagnetic fields, but um, other than the EMF detector, a REM pod creates its own electromagnetic fields. Um, at least that's what they say. So I wanted to build one. Um, now you are probably waiting to see the new uh, apparatus. So without any further ado, um, let me present the Ultimate Ghost Detector 2.1. This thing, when turned on, permanently measures the surrounding temperature with pretty high accuracy multiple times a second. You see that temperature uh, measurement is going on when this green indicator LED is on. The actual sensor is right here in the middle. Um, there are two Arduinos in here. One compares the temperature threshold uh, with uh, the one before. If the temperature drops by a fraction of a degree, it lets me know by turning on this indicator here. So each time um, this flashes, uh, the temperature has dropped a tiny little bit. Up here we have the pressure indicator. If the air pressure changes in any way, this indicator turns on and let me know. Up here we have the RAM pod assembly that emits an electromagnetic field that modulates any detected motion into sound over here and um, into light up here in this combiner tube. A second Arduino measures the intensity of uh, the combiner tube and sends uh, signals to this, um, the centerpiece and highlight of this device. Um, this is a little music box that gets triggered when a certain threshold in the combiner tube is reached and um, this little motor starts uh, cranking it. Now underneath this combiner tube there are LEDs um, that indicate how close uh, or how powerful an appearance is and um, to make things even cooler my prototype was designed to fill this combiner tube with holy water um, and a little uh, UV reactive additive. However um, this version now um, is filled with a UV reactive resin uh, as it is easier to handle and store on my shelf of uh, weird stuff. Um, now I will show you how I built this thing. Um, on one side it's actually quite easy and quite simple as coding the Arduinos for this project is super simple. Um, so as the cabling. However I am not considering this video to be a, a tutorial, more like an inspirational input. Uh, an idea what and how you could build your own. 
Now let's start off with the RAM pod. So I googled around the other day to see if I could find a pre-made thing that works using the same principle without building this entire thing from scratch. As you may know, I am a hobbyist, not an engineer. So of course I stumbled over a lot of threads about what they use uh, for RAM pods, from cheap door alarm thingies that you hook to your doorknob and that senses every approaching person to self-made kits. But a RAM pod actually is nothing else than a theremin. A theremin is that weird musical instrument you can play without touching it, controlling the pitch of the sound with one hand and the volume with the other. For what I understand, a theremin uses radio frequencies and um, is based on modulation of capacitance. In short, it's a circuit that senses for capacitance. In this case, the person playing the theremin acts as the capacitor and manipulates the sound by bringing his hand closer or further away from the instrument. I found this little theremin kit for children for only a couple of bucks on Amazon. Soldering this kit together is fun and pretty simple. Uh, the cool thing is that um, this thing also has four LED indicators that blink depending on the generated sound. So a good point to hack into and um, use this feature as form of an output of the REM pod for my build. So I soldered the kit together, but as I know I'm going to install this theremin into a casing I'm about to build, I decided to hook up some wires um, to the LEDs and piezo speaker so I can move them around where I need them later on. Also I replace three of the red LEDs with some other colors. The red gallium arsenide LEDs don't need much power to light up. Swapping them out with a green, blue and UV LED um, decreases the sensitivity. I measured the power consumption of the LEDs and found that the best order to put them in is a red, green, blue and uh, lastly UV. Now let's see if this thing works. Well, it does, but already I run into the first problem regarding feedback into the antenna. All the cables need to be as far away as possible from the antenna in order to reduce induction. As I said, I want to measure tiny changes in capacitance in an electromagnetic field, so surrounding the antenna with any sort of fields will interfere the signal. A way to reduce induction is shielding. I would need to shield the entire PCB and every cable or wire that connects to it. So I learned that already and will leave this problem for later. Now I left with these four LEDs. They are not blinking in sequence, but uh, go on quite randomly, so tapping into the outputs seems not to be reasonable to me. I would need a way to measure the overall brightness when all the LEDs are on, compared to only two for example. So I came up with a simple solution. When I would combine the four LEDs to one spot, I could measure the intensity or brightness using an LDR, a light dependent resistor or photoresistor. So I thought about using some sort of prism or maybe even a crystal of some sort. But um, by digging through my drawers of random stuff, I found these glass tubes. They once had mints in them. I gathered some other parts as well. Later that night, I suddenly had an idea. What if I fill this tube with a liquid and uh, have it act like a thick optical fiber in order to combine the LED brightness? Also, the idea of having something that contains a liquid on a ghost detector excited me. Something like from a Frankenstein chemical laboratory or so. So I scrapped all the other ideas and tried this out. It was at this moment that I also had the idea to use a fluorescent paint um, in order to make things glow in the dark. Only thing I still need to figure out is what is going to happen when all the LEDs are on and um, the LDR measures a certain threshold. Well, in the laboratory of a crazy professor, an alarm would not be a blinking LED. It uh, would be more a big light bulb or an arc of light that indicates an alarm. Or um, what about a creepy melody that starts playing? But playing an MP3 or so seems to be too technical and modern for what I have in mind. But what about a music box that starts cranking triggered from an unknown power? Yes, I had multiple sleepless nights um, in order to get all these um, ideas. And um, to my surprise, I found something similar already existing on Google. I suppose everything imaginable already exists these days. With all these ideas in mind, uh, I next proceed to the other part of sensing the unknown. I ordered this tiny little PCB. It's called a BMP180. It has all the components already installed and does nothing else than measuring temperature and air pressure. It needs 5 volts and has two outputs that go to an Arduino who then reads the data. On a breadboard, I first built the temperature sensing circuit. I need my BMP180 and Arduino board. Uh, for now I'm using an Arduino Uno, but will later use an Arduino Nano board um, to make everything compact. It uh, is essentially the same board, um, but way smaller. 
Then I basically need three LEDs. I use a green one that indicates the sensing state, a UV LED that would turn on when the temperature drops, and another UV when um, the air pressure is fluctuating. I decided to use two UV LEDs in parallel for the air pressure indicator as I designed it to be bigger than the one for the temperature. It took me a day to write this code, yes an entire day. I um, know for somebody who knows what he is doing it would probably take about 10 minutes, but however finally I get it to work. When I hold my thumb against the sensor it raises the temperature in there and when releasing it it uh, turns on the LED due to the now sinking temperature. The air pressure sensor also works. I put the entire breadboard inside a plastic bag and pushed on it in order to increase the air pressure. I forgot to turn on my camera. So that completes the second circuit. The third circuit is the LDR that reads the LEDs from the theremin. When the LDR reading surpasses a certain value, it turns on this tiny geared motor for a certain amount of time. But to power a motor I need a driver, as the Arduino board is not powerful enough on its own to do this and um, may burn out when I hook up a motor straight to the output. Also mentioning that a motor, when cranked by hand, acts as a generator, inducing current into the circuit that may fry the output of the Arduino as well. So again, Google helps me out, especially the Arduino forums, on how to build a simple DC motor driver. It consists of a PN2222 or BC547 transistor, one 1N4001 diode and a 270 ohm resistor. Again, the exact wiring can be found on my Patreon. To read the LDR value, I need a 10 kilo ohm resistor, so as of course a photoresistor. When all hooked up, I wrote another code that reads the LDR every 100 milliseconds, using a delay, and um, if surpassing a certain value, turns on the motor for 8 seconds, using millis. A, a parts list is in the description. The schematics and Arduino codes can be found on my Patreon account if you want to build your own. So after another night of thinking, instead of sleeping, I started with the design of the housing. I use my list of all the components that need to fit inside and use a caliper to get all the dimensions right. Of course I could use an old radio housing or wooden chest uh, to house all the components, but as I do have a trusty K40 laser uh, and a 3D printer, I thought mm, I should build my own. I made this coffin out of wood and designed an instrument holder that I printed in PLA. As in the past I had issues of getting all the components in the right spot, I also designed a PCB bed that holds all the circuitry and some LED holders um, that hold the LEDs in the right angle to the acrylic labels that I engraved and uh, cut out using the K40. Next I give all the wooden parts a paint job, I go with a grey, brown and black finish. I chose a prototype PCB to make all the connections and used some soldering pins so I can hook up breadboard extension wires to make the connections between the lid and the housing. That will make it easier for troubleshooting and future modifications.
Instead of holy water, I decided to use a UV resin mixed with some of this fluorescent paint powder um, to fill the little glass vial. This is a UV hardening resin, um, the same stuff that they use to fix cracks in glass or smartphone screens. Of course, I could have used every other resin, but um, this is what I have around. One of the main steps in this build and um, the part that made me the most worries is the shielding of the theremin PCB. There is so much going on in this little box that interferences are a certain thing. So I decided to build a metal shield encasing the entire theremin PCB. I made a crude layout out of paper before transferring it onto a piece of aluminum sheet what basically is an empty coke can. I cut out the layout with some scissors and bent the lids in place before covering the PCB in captain tape um, to avoid any shorts. I use a copper mesh out of an old BNC or coaxial cable to shield every cable that comes off the PCB. With a fiber pen I scrape off some of the printing of the soda can to expose the bare aluminum before soldering a ground wire that comes straight from the negative pole of the battery. From there to all of the copper mesh wires. With everything shielded and grounded, it works pretty well. Almost all of the interferences are gone for now. I made a little motor bracket and um, use thick copper wires to hook it up. This is only for cosmetical purposes. Finding a bare music box is not that easy these days, at least where I live, so I ordered one that comes in this neat little laser cut box that I will keep for future projects. I need two pulleys that I 3D printed to hook the crank up to the motor using a little belt. I chose to split the crank pulley into two parts to keep the music box as is, as um, this thing is all riveted together and I don't want to cut off any part. Also, I ordered some round bells um, that have not arrived yet, so unfortunately I need to use a rubber band for now. With the music assembly in place, it's time to add the main switch, a potentiometer I solder between the piezo speaker, before I start gluing everything together using hot glue, wood glue and super glue, and some activator spray. It took me quite a while to fit everything inside, but with a lot of fiddling I managed to get everything in there. Some velcro ensures that I can easily access right. the insides if needed. Moment of truth. Last step is the antenna. I used an old um, telescopic antenna for testing, but somehow mm, I was not satisfied with the looks of it. It does not fit. I, I need a Frankenstein-like antenna um, that I made from some aluminum welding wire and um, another piece of this awesome looking copper shielding. A BNC connector gives the outcome a somewhat industrial look.
After tuning the Arduino code a bit in order to get the best readings, adding a little ambient light blocker to the combiner tube and a protection bracket for um, the temperature sensor, my new ghost detector version 2.1 is finished. And I must say, I'm a bit proud of the outcome. This thing actually does exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, measuring and uh, registrating tiny changes in temperature and air pressure, so as um, capacitance while looking absolutely cool. But what would be a ghost detector without testing it out? I will soon upload a short video where I will go ghost hunting together with Paul from VGS. Maybe I will even make it a live stream. We'll see. I hope you enjoyed this inspirational video by um, someone who is a hobbyist and not an engineer in any way. If you did, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Any constructive input um, is always welcome. Subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff I made. Until then, see ya.